Tonight's top stories from the unit website include The European Union, a failed experiment. EU should not get more powers, says Merkel. EU UNICEF impact for health water projects in Nigeria. The European Union provides over £42 million in aid to help refugees fleeing war-torn Syria. Plus, in your letters, the EU Business Register. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, how long can this go on? According to a recent article in the Wall Street Journal, the 17-nation Eurozone remains the weakest link in our global economy after years of economic stagnation, mired in high unemployment, plagued with stalled contracting economies and paralysed by political dysfunction. Similarly, the economists also lambast eerily complacent EU leaders for sleepwalking through an economic wasteland. The resulting human suffering is sobering. Tens of millions of Europeans who want work but can't find it, and many of them are facing truly desperate situations. This article reveals just a few observations which are addressed not to EU officials, whose performance, to my mind, justifies their removal, but rather a friend speaking to ordinary Europeans who are suffering under the policies and who unfortunately have not been accorded the power to do anything about it. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is opposed to handing more powers to the European Commission and agrees with France that the European Union governments should work more closely on economic policy, she said in an interview published on Sunday. Berlin has traditionally backed a stronger commission, but the EU's Brussels-based executive has seen its influence wane during the Eurozone debt crisis, while Germany, Europe's biggest economy, has increasingly steered decision-making. I see no need in the next few years to give up more powers to the Commission in Brussels, Merkel told the weekly Spiegel magazine, adding that she agreed with French Prime Minister François Hollande on EU member states cooperating more on economic issues. Now, this all sounds like a statement protecting the national interests of Germany, but in reality, it isn't. Similarly, here in the UK, the EU frameworks and directives are so wide-ranging and far-reaching that the National Parliament has been neutered. So sure, we can say no to handing over further powers. Why? Because <laughs> the EU doesn't need them. The European Union and United Nations Children's Fund agreed to contribute €44 million Euros for water and health projects in Nigeria. The EU and UNICEF, as the UN agency is known, will provide €30 million Euros over four years to help improve maternal and child health in the northern Adamawa and Kebi states, the EU delegation to Nigeria said today in a statement from Abuja. Noble causes and worthy too, but looking at this more starkly, perhaps industry and corporations should be held more accountable for the social and ecological devastation caused in Nigeria. The EU Commission is busy starving and robbing its own civilians and yet reaching for a pat on the back by taking the European tax money that it already cannot afford. But frankly, it's a bit fur coat and no knickers, don't you think? The EU will provide over £42 million in aid to Jordan to help with the large number of refugees fleeing from war-torn Syria, it was announced today. Jordan has so far taken 489,000 registered refugees from the country embroiled in a civil war, and they expect one million in total by the end of 2013. The aid from the European Commission, the EU's executive arm, will help the education of Syrian children and fund medical treatment. Stefan Fuhl from the EC said Jordan is playing a vital role in providing support and hospitality to the Syrian refugees in their time of need. There is already public uproar around this whole sorry mess in Syria and it seems clear to us that the majority of the public are already aware that this situation in Syria has been catalyzed by Western powers, in particular the US and Britain. Our leaders are playing a dangerous geopolitical strategy game, one which the alternative free press has been quick to expose. Mark our words, William Hague will be roasted on a spit for his part in this deadly and evil charade. 
In your letters, we have the following. Hi, Rick. This unsolicited email arrived today. Before I trudge through the document, can you advise me if this is a real register? And the email reads... Dear Sir Madam, in order to have your company inserted into the EU Business Register for 2013-2014, please print, complete and submit the attached form to the following address. Updating is free of charge. So this letter came from Barry Blaker. Thank you very much for that, Barry. And our response is as follows. Upon further investigation and through reading the PDF application form that came attached with the email, it was revealed that this is really an elaborate scam. Essentially, the company makes a subscription membership charge of €995 per year, which is part of the contract that you sign up to when you send back the form. The email, and indeed the application, gives the impression that this is a free service, but the terms and conditions and the fine print on the application state the fees payable. Scams like this rely upon the disconnect between the account's purchasing department and the person signing off on the application. The applicant is led to believe that the service is free, but then they are later invoiced for the fees. All along the way, the scammers rely upon the clever use of wording. For example, in the above email, it states that updating is free of charge. However, insertion into the directory is not. If you're involved in business, then this is one to keep an eye out for. Thanks very much for letting us know, Barry. Today, in our video library, Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert reveal the true nature of privatisation and deregulation. In this telling session, they discuss how Thames Water fails in its mandate to deliver effective water treatment and sewage utility services for the people of London whilst making outrageous net profits closing on 30%, which it then offshores through a tax haven to remove its liability for corporation tax. A tale of how British taxpayers got screwed and then shipped off up a literal poo creek without a paddle. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the EUnit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below.